I'm talking about the third and the last and the largest branch of axillary artery and that is subscapular artery. Largest because it has a wide caliber. Although I'll tell you lengthwise it's not so long because it gets a different name in its course. So while running along the little border of the scapula, subscapular artery gives its branch and this branch you can see is called circumflex scapular artery. So this branch from subscapular artery is given out medially on the dorsum of the scapula. It reaches there by perforating that muscle teres minor and participates in the anastomosis on the back of scapula. Now, after giving out the circumflex scapular artery, subscapular artery gets a different name. And this continuation of subscapular artery down below is called thoracodorsal artery. It will be easy for you to remember because you must have read about a nerve with a similar name. Yes, that is thoracodorsal nerve. Can you appreciate this circumflex scapular artery? I taught you that this is a branch from this artery, subscapular artery they have shown is in dotted lines because that's something uh, not in the direct view. It's, it's lying in anterior relation to scapula. So subscapular artery, one thing I said, it's the largest branch Branch. Let me write it again. Subscapular artery is the largest branch of axillary artery. But it's not a very long artery because it soon gives its circumflex scapular artery. This I taught you it will be perforating this muscle. This perforates this muscle here on the little border of the scapula on the dorsal side in its upper portion. This muscle is teres minor. So after perforating teres minor, it reaches onto the dorsum of the scapula, right? In the infraspinous fossa. Here it will participate in the anastomosis. 